who saw way you need guru this is Pete and today I would like to discuss about the historical relations between Haitians and Dominicans uh, first and foremost this is not a racist rant uh, this is to help uh, bring information to Dominicans in the diaspora as well as those in the global community to have a better understanding of this history um, because uh, there are many examples where there are misconceptions because uh, the history is portrayed one-sided okay for example of uh, the first thing that will come into light would be Trujillo and the way that he treated uh, Haitians which we can all agree was wrong but we also have to have an open mind that the history did not just start there you know it didn't come out out of the blue okay there are events that took place that uh, unfortunately led to those events and it is by exploring uh, this history is so that we can have a better understanding of ourselves as a people and also at the same time to better, to better educate people on this history so that way they do not uh, look at us uh, in a negative light. Uh, this topic can be uh, a very hot political climate. For example, how uh, African Americans uh, experience their injustices, whether it be uh, past and present, and we also have to uh, be aware that you know each ethnic group did not have the same uh, experiences. Yes, we all go through injustices, but each of our experiences are not the same, and that's something that we have to acknowledge and to be able to. Uh, discuss um, these things in a mature manner. So I'm going to try my best to give a, a very basic outline of this topic and I ask for you guys to look at this with an open mind, um, be mindful, and uh, let's be considerate in how we uh, approach this dialogue. Okay, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to run through some quick points and then I'm going to show, share with you guys um, a summary of a few events on the screen so that way you, the viewer, can get uh, a better uh, comprehensive view and what I'm going to talk about here. So first, I'm going to talk about um, the first thing is, we have to understand that Haiti and the DR have different ethnic origins. We cannot look at everything when it comes to uh, this demographic as black and white. As, uh, it's not the same, okay? Um, Dominicans, for example, um, just like they're just our distant cousins, uh, Puerto Ricans and Cubans, we have a tri-racial background, meaning that uh, we come from a demographic that has the native, uh, the European, and African, all that various uh, ratios uh, represented, okay? And this together makes up our multicultural identity. Okay. Where on the other hand, uh, 
Haitians mostly have a um, Afro-Franco identity uh, with minimal uh, European influences. Okay, um, it's also important for Dominicans in the diaspora. They should not be out of touch with Dominicans back in the island, meaning that um, us here in the States, um, we shouldn't be ignorant of the history that we have there, everything that has taken place, okay? And you guys will get a better view of this shortly. Um, Another important thing is uh, we should also refrain from extremist views as it is not healthy for our community and also those that we interact with on a daily basis, okay? Uh, an example of this is how a fellow Dominican, Antonio Batistas, has uh, handled this uh, very poorly, you know. We want people to understand how we feel. And engulfing of race tensions is not a good way to approach it. So we want to make sure that people understand our history unbiasedly so that way um, they can be able to see from both sides not just one okay we have to understand that dominicans have a complex history with haitians that oftentimes is not well understood by the global community uh, like once again, for example, um, if we are someone that doesn't primarily speak Spanish and do not live in the Dominican Republic, you know, our understanding of it is going to be um, very small because we're not up there to understand what Dominicans in the island uh, experience and go to. And the same as well would be said how Haitians approach uh, Dominicans, okay? This is uh, very important. So we're going to review uh, the basis of this history in order to understand how Dominicans from the island feel without being biased, without being prejudiced, and to understand how um, we, as an ethnic group, um, view our experience with Haitians. So now we're going to uh, review a uh, basic timeline. So now what you guys are looking at um, is just a brief, brief overview of the Haitian-Dominican border. It's not so all com comprehensive, but it should help to give you the idea. Uh, it starts with um, Columbus landing into the island, which as we already uh, covered, was first called Quisqueya, and then later Haiti. The island was renamed Española, and it remained like this between 1492 through 1697. Then about that time, we had the arrival of the French, and we had Santo Domingo and Saint Domingue from 1697 through 1795. Then we had uh, Saint Domingue. 1795 to 1804. Uh, then we have periods of Haiti. Then the Treaty of Paris, 1814. OK, 
Okay, the Treaty of Ryswick of 1697, it acknowledged that France would have the western side of the island officially, although Saint Domingue as a colony was founded in 1659. Spain ceded Saint Domingue to France. Uh, the Treaty of Aranjuez, okay, and you guys can correct me, add your comments, okay. In 1777, which established Santo Domingo East, would have two thirds of the island, while Saint Domingue slash Haiti at the time would have uh, one third, okay? Uh, so just to go back, all right? So I mentioned in, earlier on that um, Dominicans and Haitians, they have two different demographic origins, okay? Dominicans on one hand, they, they make up of um, the European, that came to the island via post contact along later with the African at mixing with the native on the island giving rise to a new hybrid of the Dominican people. On the other hand, later on, uh, you have the French coming on the island, becoming an influence, uh, transporting slaves and that later would give rise to the Haitian people based on studies. Again, I would like to reiterate, this is not me attempting to make racist statements, but um, discussing historical events so that way we can have an understanding, a basic understanding from both sides when it comes to this topic. The Treaty of Basel in 1795 would temporarily make the border useless because France was granted the whole island and control until 1809. Um, the border changed again once the Armistice of 1936 was signed in 1935. The first significant change would come in 1930 into what Dominicans would call the Central Plateau. Haiti acquired 4,000 kilometers after 1936, totaling roughly at 22,000 uh, kilometers, a rough estimate. During the occupation by France, France kept trying to, to push on to the Spanish territory because they needed more land for their plantation economy who were quickly becoming outnumbered by their slave population. The original outline of the Haitian-Dominican border was 18,220 kilometers. Today, Haiti has more than 22,000 kilometers. Okay, when it comes to this history, uh, there's several things that has to be considered. Uh, one of the first things is uh, the massacre of Mocha and Santiago. The era of Desolines and Christophe that killed 20,000 Dominicans in Santo Domingo in Santiago, sorry, in Santiago and Mocha 
1805, a documented genocide that, that Dominicans never got reparations for. In history, we hear about how the DR through the Trujillo administrations gave reparations for Haiti because of the Parsley massacre due to Trujillo, which did not have consent from the Dominican people. The main perpetrators of the massacre of Mocha and Santiago were Jean Jacques, Jean Jacques Desiline and Henry Christophe. The massacre of Dominicans took place in Mocha, Santiago, La Vega, and areas in the Cibao. Frank Moya Bones state Desilines and Christophe killed the entire population of Mocha and burned the town. At the hands of Haitian troops under Jean Jacques Desiline and Henry Christophe. Okay? This would be the archetype how uh, Dominicans would have uh, bitter feelings towards Haitians. It would have nothing to do with skin color. The massacre of 1937, Trujillo had to pay reparations to Haiti in excess of over $5 million, which was a lot in those days. The Palsy Massacre took place in October of 1937 against Haitians living in the Dominican Republic, northwestern frontier, and certain parts of the continuous uh, Cibao region. The motive by Trujillo was not anti-Haitian or anti-Black. It was a response to secure the Dominican borders due to connections between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So when we look into this history, we have to understand wholeheartedly that the history of both sides are not good. We have our good and we have our bad. Okay? So it has started with the massacre of Mocha and Santiago. Then we have the 22 year Haitian occupation of the eastern side of the island. Okay? Then there is also during that Haitian occupation, uh, the dict dictatorship that Dominicans endured under Boyer. And then also uh, the many times that Haiti has attempted to invade the DR while at the same time there is not one instance in history where the Dominican Republic has invaded Haiti. Okay, that has to be understood. So closing out, it's important to keep an open mind that um, when it comes to this topic, it is not cut and dry. It has nothing to do with skin color. And there is a complex history that gives rise to the relationship that Haitians and Dominicans have on the island between each other today. So it's important that we understand both sides and respect both history of the nation, of each nation on, on the island. Okay, this is not a definitive documentary, but just a basic discussion to be able to discuss this in a mature and responsible way. And I encourage you guys to do the same. So this is all for now and until the next discussion. Why here?